A shader is a computer program that calculates the appropriate levels of light, darkness, and color during the rendering of a 3D scene. A quick little example is with Minecraft mods. You can see on the bottom right side is the default Minecraft game, and on the top left side is the same scene built with a couple of different shaders. Obviously, it takes up a lot more processing power, so you'll need a more powerful computer to run this, but it looks pretty cool nonetheless. Another example is a lava shader on the main 3JS website. It's safe to say that you can do some pretty cool stuff with this technique. And in this 3JS tutorial, we'll go over the basics of GLSL shaders. We'll start off with a quick lesson on the web graphics pipeline, then we'll learn about vertex and fragment shaders and how they work, and finally we'll go over the minimal amount of code required to write basic shaders in 3JS. Let's jump right in. All you need to know about the graphics pipeline is that it is the process used to display 3D images on a 2D screen with a GPU. This is basically what every video game console does. Back in the 2000s, you could only set up a graphics pipeline with frameworks like OpenGL or DirectX, and that too with dozens of lines of convoluted boilerplate code written in C or C++. Around 2009, some smart people on the internet realized that computers are now shipping with really good hardware like GPU. Use. So we don't need a video game console like Xbox 360 or PS3 to build 3D games. We can do it directly in a web browser. So the Kronos Group, which is responsible for OpenGL, built WebGL, a JavaScript API for rendering 3D scenes inside of your HTML canvas element. They also simplified the graphics pipeline from seven steps down to two. So now you could opt out of writing dozens of lines of convoluted C or C++ code and instead write dozens of lines of convoluted JavaScript code. Fortunately, 3JS does this entire process on the back end and reduces the setup code to a couple of JavaScript import statements. It also built a simple function to allow us to tap into the full power of the GPU. All we had to do was pass in some vertex and fragment shaders. The vertex shader controls the position of a given shape. So in it, we are responsible for setting the GL underscore position variable. Fragment shader controls the color of each pixel between the vertices. So in it, we're mainly just responsible for the GL underscore frag color variable. And because these shaders run parallelly on the GPU, we need to write them in a special language known as GLSL, which stands for Graphics Library Shading Language. Basically, it looks a little bit like C code, which you can see over here. Now, I could spend another 10 minutes going over all the nitty gritty details, but I think the best way to learn is to jump straight into the code. So let's write some simple shaders. As always, we're going to start off with our base 3JS template code, which just contains this normal box. All it requires us to do is set up this box geometry with this mesh normal material and add it to the scene. I'm also adding an axis helper just so that we can visualize our vertex and fragment shaders more easily. Now, the next step is to augment the box geometry by adding width, height, and depth segment, and also changing it to be a wireframe. This will help us visualize what the vertex and fragment shaders are going to do. All we've done is converted our normal box into a box that looks something like this. And from here on forth, we can actually start working with the vertex and fragment shaders. Now I'm going to comment out this boilerplate code and recreate the same scene with shaders, and let's see how that is done. So as we can see here, most of the code is the same. We're still creating a box geometry, but here the main difference is that we're adding a shader material. In the shader material, we're gonna pass in two things. The main two things we're passing in is the vertex and fragment shader. And here, what we need to do is, again, as I mentioned earlier, all we need to do is set the GL position variable. So we create the void main function, and in here, we're going to construct the GL position by multiplying the projection matrix with the model view matrix with a VEC4 and pass in the positional X, Y, and Z coordinates. When you first look at this code, it's kind of complicated, but basically all you need to know is that this is just doing some matrix multiplications and these variables are being passed in from 3JS. And of course, in the fragment shader, we have to figure out what the GL underscore frag color variable is. And here, I'm going to pass in a VEC4 
and say that it is one for red and then zero, zero for green and blue. And so once we set up our shader material, all we have to do is add it to the scene. So nothing has actually changed. Right, the code is different, so now we're using a vertex and fragment shader to build this, but it looks exactly the same, and that's exactly what we expect. Right now, we are just passing in the base code, but let's comment out this code in the vertex shader and uncomment this one. So here, the main thing that I'm doing here is that instead of just setting the position to Y, we're going to set the Y position of every single value to be sine of the z position and if you look at that every single vertice on the y axis now has the same value so it is going to just be this single little sine wave plane so how do we make this a box that has a sine wave i'm going to comment this out and uncomment this one here what we're doing is instead of just passing in the sine z position for the y coordinate, we're going to also add the y position. And here, as you can see, now the entire 3D cube is there, except it's a little bit wavy. So instead of having a super wavy cube, let's sort of change the frequency of it. And you're going to have to brush up on your trigonometry skills here. And now you can see that, you know, the frequency of this is a little bit different. And of course, we can also change the amplitude of it. And this will look uh, a little bit different as well. So point is, this is how the vertex shader works. And of course, the fragment shader, let's just do a quick one, right? Um, let's say instead of passing in red, you know, we pass in green. And now everything is green. I know that's a lot of information, but we're still not done yet. I'll stop the video here, but in the next one, we'll skip the history lesson and dive straight into more interesting vertex and fragment shader code. If you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.